Corporate Democratic Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema decided to vote along with GOP lawmakers in the Senate to maintain the legislative filibuster, which effectively blocks any piece of legislation that would actually improve people's lives or could even make our elections freer, fairer, and open to people who are eligible to vote. Now, this all happened as part of the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's plan. His idea was, well, why don't we take up a vote on the voting rights bill? And if Republicans block it in the Senate, which of course they did, well, then we will force a vote on altering the filibuster, which of course, as you guys know, the legislative filibuster requires 60 senators to vote in favor of legislation in order for it to pass. You're never gonna get that with Republican obstructionists. And so um, earlier in the evening, the Senate failed to pass a cloture motion to end debate on the freedom to vote. John Lewis Act, named for the late Georgia congressman. Republicans filibustered it by voting unanimously against cloture. Now at that point, there was a vote on altering the filibuster to allow for the passage of a voting rights bill with a simple majority. But Manchin and Cinema had made their opposition to changing the filibuster clear. But Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer decided to put them on the spot. Even doing so had no impact. The two Democratic holdouts responded by voting to keep it. And so again, there's no voting rights bill. The filibuster is still in place. They wouldn't even support a carve out, Jenk. Just one teeny little carve out to allow for the passage of a voting rights bill, which is important at a time when we're seeing voter suppression in red states, when we're seeing gerrymandering that gives Republican lawmakers the upper hand in reelections, gives Republican candidates the upper hand in elections. And so this is how it goes. It looks like Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema support that undemocratic system. Yeah, so let's be clear on a couple of things. First of all, we always tell you the reality behind politics. The rest of the media pretends it's a debate about ideas and protecting Senate traditions on principle. Hilarious, it has nothing to do with it. Let me read you a quote from the Chamber of Commerce. By the way, Daily Poster, David Sirota's site is where I'm getting this from and they do great journalism. Uh, the chamber wrote, for example, within two months, the House of Representatives has passed a $15 national minimum wage and a radical rewrite of the US labor law known as the PRO Act. Uh, this is in the beginning of the Biden administration, they said this. And quote, because of the filibuster, neither can become law as currently written. In a world without the filibuster, both might be the law of the land. In other words, you are to not allow the filibuster to go away because it would interfere with our corporate agenda of keeping wages lower. They, they, the quote I just read you is from the Chamber of Commerce, is not progressives interpretation of it. They, they say publicly, we, we are instructing our senators. And in fact, we will grade the senators on how they vote. That means if you get marked down for voting yes on killing the filibuster, you will get less money. This is just, it's a direct auction, guys, and, and they're brazen about it. Mm-hmm. And if you vote uh, no on killing the filibuster, we will hand you bigger checks. They then later bragged and, and shared an article where they said that they influence uh, the politicians and that the politicians basically do as they're told from the Chamber of Commerce. They spent $170 million on lobbying. So this is just outright bribery. And that's the filibuster has nothing to do with voting rights. Voting rights is collateral damage in the bid to keep the filibuster Mm -hmm. so that they do not increase your wages or give you health care or do anything else that helps you, but hurts the corporate bottom line by one red cent. That's what happened yesterday. Joe Manchin and Chris Sinema are neither Republicans nor Democrats. They're corporate politicians that represent corporate America. They hate their own voters who overwhelmingly disagree with them on the great majority of issues. And again, the mainstream media barely ever reports that. And they're in the you know incumbent protection racket. So what's happened here with the filibuster is even more devastating. Anna's gonna give you some quotes about how feckless and weak and Joe Biden is in a second in dealing with Manchin and Cinema. But understand that Right now, it's not that they didn't just end the filibuster. 
They didn't even do a democracy exception that could have just applied to voting rights. That's the exception I thought they were gonna use to basically cheat and protect corporate interests while protecting their own power through the voting rights legislation. But they didn't even do that bare minimum. But on top of that, talking filibuster failed. Wait a minute, <laughs> you know what a talking filibuster is? A filibuster, that's actually the tradition of the Senate. Now they're pretending, no, you don't even have to talk in a filibuster. You just wink at people and corporate interests win. So Biden's term is completely and utterly over. Without him winning on the filibuster, he'll win on nothing going forward. And you'll have three years of pathetic excuse making from now on. No, I mean, to that point, the ridiculous media drama and soap opera continues where they covered one of Biden's answers during his press conference yesterday. And he was asked about the social spending bill, that package that has failed as a result of the filibuster in the Senate. That's a social spending bill that had all of those you know, provisions that would actually improve Americans lives, universal pre-K, expansion of Medicare, you guys get the picture. He argued, well, you know, we're, we're might, we might have to break it up into several smaller bills and pass it that like, And the media covers it as if that's really something that's even possible at this point. No, nothing will pass the Senate as long as that filibuster is in place. And even with a bill that could pass through reconciliation, meaning it could pass with a simple majority, you still need corporate Democrats in the Senate to vote in favor of it. And as we saw with both Manchin and Cinema, they have no problem standing in the way because they know that there are really no consequences coming from the executive branch. And I want to get to that point now. Because while yes, Manchin and Cinema certainly deserve blame, remember the buck stops with the president, the fish rots from the head down. He is the leader of the country, he is the head of the Democratic Party. And I want to show you the fecklessness, the weakness coming from Joe Biden on several issues. He will not hold their feet to the fire. He will not hold them accountable. He will not apply any pressure. So last week, Senator Sinema actually went up on the Senate floor and gave a speech to make it abundantly clear that she's gonna do right by her corporate donors and keep the filibuster in place. Now she didn't use that wording. She tried to make herself out to be some warrior for democracy, someone who wants to ensure that there's unity in the Senate, that there's bipartisan in the Senate. And let's keep it real, that's nothing more than an excuse. That's nothing more than cover for her corporate donors and their fears that even creating one carve out for the voting rights bill could be a slippery slope and that their profits could be at stake. Now here's her speech and then I'm gonna tell you how Biden responded to it, let's watch. And while I continue to support these bills, I will not support separate actions that worsen the underlying disease of division infecting our country. The debate over the Senate 60 vote threshold shines a light on our broader challenges. There's no need for me to restate my longstanding support for the 60 vote threshold to pass legislation. And there's no need for me to restate its role protecting our country from wild reversals in federal policy. It is a view I've held during my years serving in both the US House and the Senate. And it is the view I continue to hold. So for cinema, maintaining the legislative filibuster allegedly is important because we want to make sure that our agenda keeps running into Republican obstructionists again and again and again. By the way, the same Republican obstructionists that they fear monger about when they're running for their reelection campaigns. But then when push comes to shove, they pretend like we're all comrades, we're all good friends. We want to work with them. We all know it's BS. We all know that this is really providing cover for corporate donors. Now with that said, what's important is how the President of the United States, who allegedly wants his agenda to pass, reacted to it. How did he respond to it? On that same day, January 13th, after she gave that speech, Biden met with her. On January 13th, reports time, Biden returned to Capitol Hill, this time to make a show of strong arming his party senators to pass voting legislation. Biden spent several minutes reminiscing about the days of Robert Byrd and Strom Thurmond. Senators reported afterwards, Cinema did not speak up in the meeting and Biden did not call on her to explain herself. One senator told Time the president was quote soft spoken, 
and difficult to hear. Immediately afterward, Manchin reaffirmed his opposition as well. All right, so all those Biden supporters, everyone who rallied to his defense after I criticized him for being pathetically weak, you, you proud of your guy? You proud of this weakness? You proud of him turning his back on the very people who got him elected in the first place? Remember, Biden was the one who was boasting about the power of persuasion and how, you know, he's a master of the Senate and he knows how that animal works and he knows how to get people on his side. He has been a complete and utter failure, especially on the substantive issues that organizers and activists put in the work on the ground to get him elected for. So I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm done with the apologists. I'm done with the Democratic Party and their fecklessness. It's embarrassing. Who would want to be associated with this? It's absolute garbage. Okay. So there's only two possible answers here. Uh, let me eliminate uh, one option uh, from the board. I, I don't even think a Democratic consultant could make a case for this with a straight face. That Biden has a fourth four dimensional chess strategy where he lets cinema humiliate him and doesn't challenge her. And then Manchin sees how weak he is and then he humiliates Biden. And then there are no consequences for that. But secretly there's gonna be a consequence, what, three and a half years later, a couple of decades later, is he gonna get them You know, after they're out of office? What? Do you, what there's no strategy here. So that leaves you only two options. Either he's enormously weak and completely out of touch. Oh, well, you know, in the old days, I was talking to Robert Byrd and Mick McConnell, and I'd give him whatever they wanted, and then we would make a deal, and I'd get marketing out of it. Well, okay, number one, it doesn't work that way anymore. Uh, number two, you've already given them everything, and they've given you nothing back. He doesn't have a plan B. He doesn't, it's super obvious. His administration is completely over. He In that call that the reporters are referencing there, he didn't know it at the time, but that was his surrender to Manchin and Cinema and the corporate Democrats. It was basically his concession speech saying, okay, I, I, you win, I'll do nothing more. I'll just be a doormat from now on. So that's a fact, okay. But to be fair, I said there was a second option. It's brought to you by one of our members, Sexy Speed Racer, wrote in. But isn't Biden's true agenda, nothing will fundamentally change in a Biden-Harris administration. So from that perspective, he's been wildly successful at fighting for that non-change. Now that is an excellent point, point we've been telling you a long time. I think the answer is both. He is really weak and that's why the donors picked him because he said nothing will fundamentally change. And you can see with your own eyes, I'm totally weak. I won't be able to stand up to anyone. So don't worry, you'll steamroll me and nothing will change. Well, in that case, the promises were kept. They were just kept to the donors. So we always, we told you from day one in the primaries, in the general election. The question is, Joe Biden has made two different sets of promises. One was to the voters, Oh my God, I'm gonna change things. Oh, I can't believe Trump did this and that, and we're gonna change all that stuff. And to the donors, he made a completely different promise that nothing would fundamentally change. Mm. Which one is the real Biden? Two and time we and told Biden. you from day one that, that, it, that it's the one that's gonna appeal to the donors and not the voters. And we were right, and the rest of mainstream media that kisses Democratic Party ass was obviously wrong. The proof is in the pudding, they just voted. They just voted to say, yes, TYT was 100% right. Progressives are 100% right. Joe Biden isn't gonna do anything because his real audience, the people he actually serves is the donor class. He's just the servant for them. I, there's a few other things that I have to get to because it's just incredible how on, on policy and actually getting it done, yes, Biden is weak, but apparently he also has fragile feelings. Now, first I wanna start off with, um, his delusional behavior in regard to the Republican Party, something that's been incredibly frustrating about Biden since he was campaigning for president in 2020. He said during his press conference that he noticed something shocking about Republicans. Let's let's watch that video. Crickets, yeah, crickets. They had no answer. I did not anticipate that there'd be such a stalwart effort 
to make sure that the most important thing was that President Biden didn't get anything done. Think about this. What are Republicans for? What are they for? They mean one thing they're for. I don't know, Biden. Why don't you tell me what they're for? You served as vice president under the Obama administration for, I don't know, only eight years where the Republican Party did what? Oh, that's right. They were obstructionists. How are you shocked or surprised by this? Did you just forget the eight years that you experienced? And by the way, it's not just those eight years. We saw what Republicans were up to before then, what they've been up to since then. Oh, I just didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. By the way, I was the most qualified to be president. Please pick me because I'd be the most persuasive. Biden claiming that he'd be the one to unite the country and actually succeed in passing an agenda. What did he really succeed in? Embarrassing everyone? Pretending as if he didn't know what Republicans were really all about? And by the way, this timepiece that we've been citing is a must read because it really gives you a sense, like a detailed description of just how pathetic this administration is. Reporters clustered around Biden seeking his perspective on the way forward, a plan. He offered only a shrug. I hope we can get this done, the president said, but I'm not sure. And then get a load of this. A lot of people have been very blunt with them about what a terrible job they're doing, a congressional Democrat says of the White House. But they're very sensitive. Oh, are they? Are they very sensitive? Yeah, very sensitive. If you're sensitive, how about don't run for office? How about sit your ass at home, don't waste our time, and certainly don't waste the time of the activists and organizers who do the work to put you in that position of power in the first place? Oh, they're very sensitive. F off, absolute pathetic behavior. Anna, you will have made them even more sensitive. Oh, go with cry those about kind it. Of harsh go cry words. about it. Go cry about okay. it. Okay, and they will. I assure you, they will. Yeah, they will spend a good deal of time crying and blaming us instead of actually doing their goddamn job. So, guys, if did you know that the Republicans were going to obstruct them all the way? Literally, everyone in the audience knew, right? And you don't have to be a progressive. Republicans knew you guys were, you were going to obstruct them, right? Independents knew it. Everybody knew it. The only people who didn't know it are, are people that work in watching the reporters are like, oh, Republican parties have structure. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know Joe Biden's like, oh, oh my God, the Republicans are the opposite party. Holy cow, how come nobody told me that? Guys, part of corporate media is they do myth making. One of the myths is that the people in power are great, that they're brilliant and incredible and accomplished and competent. It's a myth to keep the people in power in power. So it makes you go, oh well, well, I mean, they must know what they're doing. No, you just saw it right there. That's the man behind the curtain. He has no idea what's going on. Completely befuddled. Mr. Magoo is in charge. They're not great men. They're just men willing to serve the interest of the people who pay them. It's not at all complicated. That's exactly what happened here. That's all that ever happens in politics. Anyone telling you otherwise is selling you a a bag of goods and they can't do a bill of goods. And those are the guys who will tell you like, oh no, wait, you shouldn't say that. People in Washington will be very offended. They are sensitive. We don't care. The truth is Biden has no idea what he's doing and his administration is over and he's actually not that upset about it. No, he's not. He actually thinks, hey, you know what? I made a couple of deals. I got a corporate backed infrastructure bill passed. I did the bare minimum COVID. Good enough to retire on. And that's what he'll do. He'll retire because there's no way that guy's winning in 2024, let alone running. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.